This is James Swanick with Alcohol Free Lifestyle, and today I'm handing the reins over to my Project 90 top coach, Victoria English, who is a wonderful woman from Denver, Colorado, who has been coaching all of our Project 90 clients to get long-term power over alcohol. I asked Victoria to step in and interview one of our graduating clients, a lovely woman by the name of Michelle, and I think that's it. I should just hand over to Victoria from here. Nice to have someone different than me. You probably, you know, maybe you like the soothing tones of my voice, but <laughs> we can spice it up a little bit and have uh, Victoria step in and host the podcast today. Just a reminder, there are details in the show notes uh, of this episode where you can get my guide that will give you long-term, or at least sort of walk you through the process that I give to my clients on how to get long-term power over alcohol. So if you'd like to reduce alcohol, you want to quit, if you want to reduce, you know, do moderation, maybe you want to quit entirely, uh, the same process and system that I walk my Project 90 clients through, I outline in that guide. The link is alcoholfreelifestyle.com forward slash guide. It's in the show notes. Uh, likewise, if you feel ready to quit alcohol for at least 90 days and you want some additional help. Now, just to be clear, uh, 95% of my teachings and coachings, you can find on the internet for free. You just Google James Swanick. You can listen to this podcast. Um, 5% of what I put out there uh, are paid programs, and it's for people who want some additional support or they want help executing the process that I hand out for free. So if you want some accountability, if you realize that you can't do it by yourself or you don't want to do it by yourself, uh, you're welcome to, to schedule a complimentary coaching call with one of my coaches. Uh, it could be Victoria. It might be one of my other coaches, Jim or Alfie. And uh, we'll listen to you, hear you out, and see if we can help. And maybe you'll end up working with us and we'll support you and you'll become a Project 90 client. And if not, worst case scenario, you'll leave with a, a plan to go and do it on your own. Uh, it is for over 35s. The, the most, most of our clients are in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. Uh, yeah, very, very rarely do I take someone in their 20s. Uh, the, the, the impact, what I what I found is that folks in their 20s don't really want to quit drinking as much as folks in their mid-30s, 40s, 50s, 60s because, you know, people realize they're getting a little bit older, the drinking slowing them down, they want to live their best life, they want to take it seriously, they want to invest in themselves, whereas let's face it, when you're in your 20s, you just want to go out drunk and have fun and do crazy stuff right, most of the time. Uh, anyway, if you want to schedule one of those calls, then uh, the link is in the description as well. It's alcoholfreelifestyle.com forward slash schedule. Uh, or if you can, you want to text me, you can text me at the number 44222. Just text the word project 90 and I'll text you back uh, a schedule link where you can book that complimentary call. Enough from me. Let's hand over to Victoria English, who is the Project 90 top coach. And she is interviewing today Michelle Bunyan, who is a Project 90 graduating client. Over to you, Victoria. Hi, everyone. This is Victoria English with Project 90. I have taken over James's podcast today. I have a very special guest, a member of Project 90, who is very close to my heart. Michelle and I have spent hours and hours chatting and growing together. And she has agreed to share her story. Michelle is from Sewell, New Jersey. She is 66 years old. Several years ago, she had gastric bypass surgery and found that she was getting drunk after only two glasses of wine. Michelle made it for 28 days when she did the 30-day alcohol-free program. She then decided to try our 90-day program after having limited success with AA and rehabilitation programs. Michelle enjoys travel, her family, and her career. Michelle credits her faith with helping her achieve 93 days of continuous alcohol-free living. Michelle, thank you for being here. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Well, it's an honor for us. And I've said to Michelle many, many times that her story is especially inspiring. As I said, we've spent a lot of time on uh, group meetings, and Michelle is a wealth of knowledge. She has helped so many of our other members 
as they have had challenges, she also is the first to celebrate their victories. One thing that inspires me about Michelle especially is her tenacity. You know, when we're struggling with an alcohol problem, there are definitely those dark moments where we can feel defeated and hopeless. And Michelle, being in her 60s, has that tenacity and faith to never, ever give up. It isn't easy to go into a program and, quote, fail. We don't call it failure, but it certainly can feel that way. Michelle never, ever gave up, and I have such admiration for her. And I know that she is going to inspire you, our listeners today. And I also think that she will continue to share her story and inspire others. Michelle, thanks for being here. Thank you. So why don't you just start uh, from the beginning of when you started drinking? What was that like? Uh, I started drinking, of course, you mentioned I had gastric bypass surgery. So um, I guess the food was not doing it for me anymore. So I went to alcohol and uh, I found that in one or two glasses that I would start to be inebriated. And I um, continued, the drinking continued where the one went to two, went to three, and went to bottles. I was drinking, I started with the small bottles of wine, then the bigger bottles of wine. And um, I am grateful that nothing happened to me or anyone else during the course of this. Um, I was um, admitted to the hospital, not admitted, but I went to the hospital ER uh, after drinking and um, not being able to walk. And um, so they called the ambulance where they probably would have put me in jail, but they took Mm -hmm. me to the hospital and, um, you know, had me just stay there, I guess, until I felt better and I dried out. And um, but that wasn't the end all. Um, There were times that I did things that I I couldn't remember. I blacked out. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I did not want to live anymore. Um, I was so ashamed of myself. And. I tried, you know, rehab after work. It wasn't um, an inpatient, but it was rehab after work. I went to AA. Uh, I never felt good enough. I didn't feel like, yes, hi, I'm Michelle. I'm an alcoholic. I, I it just didn't fit me. And but I did say it when I was there. And um, I tried to do the ninety day, you know, with AA, where you go to ninety meetings in ninety days, and mm-hmm. um, it just was a, a vicious cycle. A merry-go-round that I was just, I couldn't get off. And um, I think that's where I felt, um, you know, that if I could just end my life, you know, then it led to separation, my divorce. And, you know, I just figured, you know, what good am I? You know, there's, I, I have no good in this life. I can't give to anybody because, um, you know, I have this habit of drinking and, and it brought so much shame, mm-hmm. shame to me as a person. I hit it. From, I hid it from my husband for about seven months. He didn't even know I drank. Mm-hmm. Uh, I used to drink when he went to work. Um, I hid it from my family, uh, but it, it was horrible. It was it was terrible. So that's where it brought me to. Yeah, ninety days, ninety the project ninety. There's so much in that in that story. Just <laughs> those two minutes of sharing. So what I heard you saying is that it sounds like perhaps the first problem was food, misusing food. Yes. Mm -hmm. Was that something that you struggled with for many years? Oh, yes. Yes. It's been a lifetime. Um, I still now do struggle with food. I am learning a lot through the Project 90 and taking one thing at a time and the neural pathways and how to create... um, Again, I was addicted to diet programs since I was about 12. And um, but now I realize, okay, I will um, forgive myself and have mercy and and grace and say, okay, well, I'll just give this one thing up right now and uh, replace it with something healthy. So it's like putting off and putting on and uh, rather than I can't have that. I can't do this. I can't eat this. If I want the little 
chocolate bar, I will have the chocolate bar. Mm -hmm. So it's just replacing it. And um, I did a learn, I did learn a lot of good wisdom through the Project 90 and people who shared. Mm -hmm. It's so common for uh, people to replace one maladaptive coping skill with another maladaptive coping skill. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why I think it's important for people to hear your story and understand how easily we can shift from something like a food addiction to an alcohol dependence or addiction. Mm -hmm. Uh, And again, there's so much shame tied to all of it that it keeps us in secrecy. And um, I, I think that there is a special type of shame for women and mothers Mm. when we are coping in these unhealthy ways. Certainly food is one thing that, um, you know, if, if people are heavy or something like that, there's definitely a stigma attached to that. Yes. But the stigma of alcohol is especially shameful. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, isn't it? Because Here, alcohol is a highly addictive substance. You've learned that now through Project 90. The first thing we do is we examine what is alcohol? What is it? What does it do to our body and our brain? And yet in society, we're expected to use it. uh, Marketers just saturate us with messages that, oh, you can't get through life. You can't get through motherhood. You can't get through family strife without a drink. Mm. But then if we develop the natural thing of a habit, a dependence, an addiction, then it's all switched around. Well, what's wrong with you? Yes. Was that your experience? Yes. I, I, (laughs) you know, like I said about my faith, I would, you know, beg like, okay, God, what is wrong with me? Why am I so different? Why can't I give up or why can't I live like a normal person? Why am I made the way I am? Um, and I, uh, I couldn't understand it and I, I couldn't relate to those around me, um, or even share with them how, how I felt. So it, it was so lonely and it was a lost feeling that, um, not until I really got into project 90, Mm-hmm. And um, I remember my first post, I introduced myself. It was probably about 20 seconds long <laughs> and people uh, accepted me and they welcomed me. And I, like I, that blew me away. It's like, wow, people from all walks of life all over the United States, men, women, um, all different ages. We all have something in common and we accept one another and we literally love each other. I mean, even though yeah. love is all many forms, but, um, you know, we love each other through this and we accept one another. And even when we do have a slip, which I did have a slip through my 90 days, mm-hmm. um, it's nothing that we need, like, or I needed to be ashamed of. I, I did go through some shame, but as soon as I came back to Project 90 and admitted my slip, uh, I was accepted and people gave me words of encouragement. My coach gave me words of encouragement. And, um, you know, it's just such a positive way of getting through such a shameful experience. Right. Alcohol. Well, Project 90 is <laughs> exactly what alcohol does not want us to have. Alcohol wants us to need it, to want mm. it. It definitely wants to drive us into isolation. You and I were just speaking before the call that, um, you know, going into social situations isn't where we would do our heavy drinking. Yes. It was Mm -hmm. when we were alone and alone Mm -hmm. with our feelings, alone with uncomfortable feelings. I don't even call them bad feelings. They're just feelings. And and I think one thing we've definitely learned in Project 90 is how to just observe our feelings and not put a judgment or a label on them. Uh, But, you know, (laughs) I like to, I like to kind of personify alcohol sometimes and think about it going, Oh no, 
Oh no, she's in a community. Oh crap, she's talking about it. Oh no, people are accepting her. Oh no, she's seeing me for what I am, which is a, a an awful addictive toxin. But of course, she's going to be become dependent upon. Um, and and you know, James has put so much thought and care into structuring the program that way mm-hmm. because we understand where alcohol wants us to be. It wants us alone. It wants us breaking promises to ourselves and our loved ones yet again. It wants people to not believe our words. It wants us to have <clears throat> that cognitive dissonance and that uh, incongruous congruency in the way we live our lives. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> because like you, I showed up as one person mm-hmm. to the world, mm-hmm. but there was something inside of me that drove me to be alone and to drink until I couldn't feel those Mm. things that I didn't know how to tolerate. Talk a little bit about, I want to talk about, there's so many things to talk about. (laughs) Talk a little bit about your experience in Project 90 when you had that, what we call a reset. Uh, Just again, for our listeners, we don't use words like relapse. We don't, use words like alcoholic. We don't use words like recovery or sobriety. And we have total respect for anyone who does. Our mission in Project 90 is to provide an empowering, positive path to experiencing alcohol-free life. And we talk a lot, Michelle, about you know that cone that I show about expansive thinking and contractive thinking. Mm-hmm. And we are about expanding, using words that lift us up and lift up others. And we do have accountability. We do ask that our members be transparent and vulnerable and raw. And sometimes that's not easy. So Michelle, you certainly experienced that when you had that small reset. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened uh, and what it was like when you shared and what you learned from it? Uh, I was traveling. Um, I wasn't sleeping. I was out of my routine, my ordinary every day. Um, I used to hide what I felt from my significant other. And I tried to deal with his issues and my issues. And I just said, I'm going to have that drink and I want that drink and I'm going to have it. I tossed and turned all night and I just got up and I decided to have this little bottle of wine that they usually give you on the airplanes. And I, uh, it probably was like a a glass and a half of wine. Mm -hmm. So I had that, I put it away, you know, I threw the, um, uh, bottle out. I did confess it to uh, or admit it to my son whose house I was over uh, that I took that bottle of wine and um, he was a little concerned. Um, a few days later, I did admit it to uh, uh, my husband. Um, but I, ha- I I didn't even regret it. I didn't have any remorse. I, I said, I don't care. I'm having that drink. And then it hit the next morning that, oh, what did I do? I have 55 days of alcohol-free living and I took this drink. Now I got to start from day one. So I immediately, at that time, uh, it was Kevin. um, I texted him. It was Easter Sunday and he got back to me. And the main thing I remember from that conversation was integrity. Mm -hmm. It was integrity of my word and what I had said I was going to do. Mm-hmm. So I said, like, you know, I was going to be alcohol free for 90 days. After 90 days, that was another decision I would have to make, whether to take a drink, resume drinking or still continue the alcohol free living. And, um, you know, it wasn't too bad. I, I admitted it. I had a start day one. Uh, I don't want to do that. But um, but I did learn from it. And um, I think in learning from it, I was helping I was able to help others who had also had to reset. Mm -hmm. And um, I really give kudos to those who didn't have to reset, but I I, I did learn a lot. Um, It was one time and you never know when that can happen again. So I have to always be aware of that, that it's right there in front of me. I can 
you know, I could have that drink. I could go to the um, liquor store and buy alcohol. So, um, you know, but I decided, no, this is the way I want to live. Quote, like you said, I'm in my 60s. I don't want to have to go the rest of my life and say, oh, alcohol. Oh, it's a shame. Alcohol, alcohol killed her. I don't want that. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to be more than that in, in this, the rest of my life and to, and to help others in some, some respect, whatever that may be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, you know, um, one thing that Michelle and I have spoken about is her, her level of integrity. And again, it goes back to alcohol can rob us of, of that, rob us of living uh, in alignment with our core values. And certainly from what I know of Michelle, she has a lot of integrity. Uh, and the foundation of that is her faith, um, the love that she has for her family, um, the intention she has to live a healthy life understanding that alcohol is detrimental on many levels to our health. But isn't it interesting that she had that small bottle? I know exactly what you mean. (laughs) I used to hide them in my purse. Uh, (laughs) Yes, I did. Um, Especially the plastic ones because they wouldn't clap around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Yep. That's quite a piece of work myself. But, um, you know, it would have, first of all, no one would have known. Oh. She didn't get drunk. She didn't black out. She didn't, uh, it wasn't evident to her family. No one saw her intoxicated. She didn't suffer a, a hangover, but she followed through because she had, by that point at 55 days, mm-hmm. had returned to her core values and was living in alignment with them. And I would imagine, Michelle, that just felt really unnatural again and and uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was. Um, I could have given up easily and just mm-hmm. walked away and just. Um, but did I want to go back to what I was or what how my life was at that point and and jeopardize, you know, my family? And I do have six grandchildren and, you know, having fun with them and taking care of them. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I just didn't want to go back there. Yeah. Yeah, you're right because sometimes people will have that that reset and they will uh in other programs or if they're doing this on their own, they'll say, "Well, I failed again. Mm. I can't do this." And they'll just go off and resume their their drinking habits. Mhm. Uh which as you know, uh after usually a short amount of time, uh the drinking habits come back just as strong as before. Yeah. And uh, oftentimes worse, Mm -hmm. partly because of the physical addictive nature of the substance and then the emotional part, that Mm -hmm. deep, deep shame. So what was it about our community, about our coaches, our program that gave you the strength to say, you know what, I'm I'm not going back there. I I know what that leads to. I'm going to be authentic and vulnerable and raw and talk about this? Uh, As I'm going back and um, there's so much to the program that I'm probably not even remembering since I started, you know, and then had to reset. But when I initially started, um, you know, we uh, were asked to do our why, why, why do we want this alcohol free living? And um, occasionally I would go back and look at that. I did try to watch, James has a uh, short video for every day of the 90 day program. I did try to watch that. And uh, also he had mentioned the flowers. I was a little failure on that, but I did buy (laughs) flowers for my graduation (laughs) per se. (laughs) But the, the, the gratitude journal is, was really helpful for me. And I did buy James a book. Uh, which I did this morning. And um, I think it's a mind shift of, and it's positive. It's not, and I always used to say, I'm not going to eat that, or I'm not going to drink that, or I'm not. And it was always that negative word in there. So now I say, I choose not, I choose to drink healthy drinks, or I choose to eat healthy foods. Um, so I think the the journal, the gratitude journal, and there's a lot of times I 
repeat it, what I was grateful for, or something <laughs> new happened or a new revelation. Like we're never too old to to have a revelation. And there it's like mind boggling. And um and also to me, the Marco Polos, the one on uh, you know, trying to post nearly every day. There were days that I didn't, and also posting in the um Facebook, mm-hmm. uh, Project 90 Facebook group, I thought was really helpful. So it, it, it's a program that um, envelops, it's a holistic program that envelops everything that you are and the why and uh, knowing that alcohol is an attract- attractively packaged poison mm-hmm. and it does burn your esophagus, your stomach. It causes, you know, breast cancer and uh, so many ill effects that um you know who needs it <laughs> right exactly if i had the if i had the marketing budget that uh these wine companies have i i my message would be out there but <laughs> <laughs> we're getting out there one <laughs> one podcast one post at a time um you know what i hear you saying is project 90 in our community delivers what alcohol promises and fails to deliver Mm. because what does alcohol say it's going to do? It's going to make me feel better. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, um, I'm just going to feel better. I'm going to forget about how my feelings I'm going to numb out. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I I mean, the project 90 really makes you, I I realize, and after all these years to feel my feelings, like you said, they're feelings. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that I have to act on them. Doesn't mean I have to react to them. Um, it, they're just feelings, and sometimes it's good to ponder and to journal. And I'm a big advocate of journaling, also. Mm-hmm. That journaling and just write, just start to write your feelings, and just you know whatever comes out comes out. And I think that's very um, mind. I mean, like you could see like, okay, these are my feelings. I could see them on paper now, Mm -hmm. you know, and I could address like, okay, why am I feeling that way? You know, what has happened? As you said, what has happened? What has brought me to this point where Mm -hmm. I'm feeling like this? And um, even though I don't like those feelings, (laughs) (laughs) the best thing would be to numb out, but I do let them sit. I sit with them. Mm -hmm. I um, ponder, I pray. I read positive things and um, I think that I'm hoping I'm answering your question (laughs) and I'm not just going on and on, but I feel like, um, you know, it, it has made just such a turnaround for me Mm. and dealing with life and feelings. Right. Yeah. Alcohol tells us, uh, you know, this is uncomfortable. So let me take it away from you. Uh, Sometimes it promises that it will help us feel more connected to people. Uh, It promises that we'll find some answers to our problems. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And yet you wake up the next morning. First of all, you physically feel terrible. None of your problems have been solved. Mm -hmm. In fact, what happens? You have worse. (laughs) They're worse. (laughs) And you may have created even more. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the connection that we're, that we seek, um, is is much more difficult in our personal lives when when there's alcohol in the picture. People see us as two different entities. Mm-hmm. And that's confusing and difficult for the people who love us. Yeah. And there's something about, you know, Project 90. We are all what it's it's funny, isn't it? As you get on these calls and, and you learn more about people, um, we have so much more in common than this alcohol thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really exciting because we can come out with things that are going on in our lives and someone will say, oh, I have a resource for that. Oh yeah, I can tell you something about that. Mm -hmm. And so it's so much more than that. But in those challenging moments where we're thinking, you know, I'm really feeling like having a drink. You can go there and share it. Yes. Safe. Mm hmm. Definitely. Yeah. What have you learned about? Oh gosh, I've I, we've gone for hours. What have you <laughs> learned about um, self-talk? 
Because one thing about Michelle, I'll share with you all, is that, like I said, she is so supportive of other members. Uh, she is the first to welcome somebody who's new. She's the first to reach out if someone hasn't shown up in a while, or we know that maybe they're going through a challenging situation in life. And then she's also there to celebrate and, you know, bring just, you know, have the confetti ready for <laughs> people when they, when they have a victory. Um, and that's a wonderful quality. But earlier in the interview, I heard you talking about how you would speak to yourself in the past when you were caught on that merry-go-round, as you called it. Mm. How has that changed for you? Uh, I really feel with self-talk, um, you have to love yourself where you're at. And um, will I make mistakes? Yes, I will make mistakes. Uh, we're human, I'm human. Um, but I've learned to forgive myself and to love myself and to um, just go from where I'm at and that little slip, error, mistake, anywhere in life mm -hmm. and say, okay, you know, all right, that was, what did I learn from that? Mm -hmm. What is the positive things I could bring, um, not, not only to myself, but to others, to my family, um, mm -hmm. to, to the environment? Uh, it's just so much, it's so different now. It's like my, it's a complete mindset turnaround 300 and what is it 360 degrees yeah. <laughs> and um I never thought I would and you would think like I'm as you said I'm a little older so I'm more set in my ways but but it happens and I am so grateful for that I mean that is one of the things I am so grateful and I am so grateful for for my coaches and the people that are part of the program James for creating the program Mm -hmm. it, it is just so totally awesome, more than I expected. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, they're like they say, put some skin in the game, which I have, and it's an investment. Um, but I didn't think twice of it. I mean, I had the resources, thankfully. I didn't have to go to anybody. I had the resources. I was able to, because I was determined, I don't want to live like this anymore. Mm -hmm. I just, and I tried other things. I tried free things or books and tapes and nothing was helping. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really grateful for the program, really. Well, we're grateful for you too. Um, you know, you're talking about how uh, the mindset shift has, has applied to so many areas of your life. And I do find, and I certainly found this myself on my own journey, which I'm still on a journey. We all are. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's about so much more than alcohol what we do in this program is about so much more than yes. alcohol and it does trend. It, it translates into all areas of your life. Mm -hmm. I have to share also, and I shared with you the other day was that um, this is the first time in 25 years that I do not take antidepressants. Mm -hmm. um, and that's both project 90 and my faith. And, mm -hmm. you know, that came into play too. And, also, uh, all of my adult life, I went to therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, I could never figure out who I was or where I was supposed to be. Or so um, this is like that combined in it, too. You know, maybe not per se psychiatry or psychology, but it's just so helpful. It's all in our minds at first. And then mm -hmm. if we could reset that, you know, it could kind of set our lives on a on a pathway of yes. health and vibrance and um, just total happiness and joy. And of course, there's going to be disappointments. I don't want to say that it's totally <laughs> work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, uh, when when members come in and we help them understand, like I said, alcohol is a substance. You can't argue with that. It's just science. People can have all sorts of different opinions about alcohol and moderation and, and what is an alcoholic and, and that's fine. You can't argue with the science. And that was what changed it for me. And I, that's why I'm so passionate about sharing that with our members to say, look, this is alcohol. This is what it does to your brain. This is mm -hmm. what it does to your dopamine and serotonin. This is why you crash afterwards. And that's why your brain is like this, trying to find homeostasis, that level 
normal rate. It can't do that when we are continuously drinking. So I love what you said, because again, certainly work with your doctor, but once you can return to your set point, it's a game changer. Mm -hmm, Definitely. And also I would imagine as you go through this program and you gain more confidence and you gain more clarity because the alcohol is out of your system. You know, we, we teach our members about, look, those first, you know, maybe 10 days, two weeks, you will have physical cravings. Mm. After that, it's more about, um, you know, handling your emotions, navigating some social things without alcohol, but it's out, it's clearing out of your system. Mm -hmm. And you're not waking up with a dumpster fire that you created the night before, Uh (laughs) which certainly can lend itself to mood instability. Yes. You're taking away a lot of those things that could cause us to feel anxious and depressed. Yes. And definitely what I did talk to my doctor before I went off of the antidepressants, Mm -hmm. because anyone listening, I don't want you to think if you do take antidepressants, talk to your doctor. doctor. (laughs) Don't go throwing them in the toilet. (laughs) Yeah, no, it's not, uh, you know, always be under a doctor's doctor's care. care. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yes. But it is interesting how suddenly uh, the number of of problems in your life just kind of start to dissipate. Mm -hmm. And with that clarity and an alcohol-free mind, the problems that are there, have you found they're a lot easier to navigate? Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. I finally have found who I am Mm. and um, stopped fitting into everyone else's mold of who they think I should be. And um, it took me a little longer than most. (laughs) But, um, and I accept myself you know, as I am, where I am, and I accept others as they are and where they are. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't try to change them. And I um, I realize when somebody's trying to change me, I go, oh, okay. You know, that's what you think, but that's not who I am. <laughs> well, have you found that your ability to be comfortable in your skin and sort of state your opinions and hold your boundaries has gotten easier? now that you're alcohol free. Yes, definitely. I could, um, there are certain people who have, you know, stronger personalities that Mm -hmm. I would not speak how I felt or, um, you know, say what I was feeling, but now I'm able to do so because I'm worth it. You know, I, I have something to say and I, you know, I say it with truth and love and not with, uh, condemnation, Mm -hmm. or pointing my finger at the other person, but this is who I am and how I feel. And uh, I think I should be equally respected as I respect others. Mm -hmm. And in my experience, when someone is struggling with alcohol misuse, they're not always validated and heard. They're not, their boundaries are not always respected because it's kind of like, yeah, well, she's saying that, but she's got that drinking problem. So we don't really have to give her a lot of, give her words, a lot of weight. Did you, did you kind of get that sense that you couldn't be heard because, because your family knew you had that thing? (laughs) Yeah, I have to say it is uh, one particular person. I won't say who it is, (laughs) just in case he ever listens to, oh, (laughs) if he listens to the podcast, um, yeah, and it's still now that sometimes it's brought up to me that, oh, thank God you're not drinking. Or remember, you know, when you were drinking mm. and uh, you're not thinking care- clearly because you were drinking. You know, I never, they didn't, they weren't able to see beyond that, behind right. that alcohol or drinking that habit. They, they, but that person or whoever, I'm sure there's more than that, just one person. <laughs> <laughs> they're not able to see beyond the habit that you formed, you know, rather than see, why are you struggling? Why, you know, you know, let me help you out. You know, what, what can I do to help you see, you know, it's just not, like you said, it's just not the alcohol. There's just so much more to it. Mm -hmm. And with any substance there, it's just not the sub or behavior, behavior, Mm -hmm. you know, um, it's just not that it's more to it than that. Yes. 
yeah, I think we can all uh, just stand a little taller and speak our truth more easily and understand that how others react is not our job to, to worry about mm -hmm. <laughs> because we're showing up authentically and yes. living in congruence with our values and our, and uh, the way that we want to present ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you said you're a grandmother of six. Yes. Um, if there's someone out there listening and they are, I'm 50, so it's not like I'm a spring chicken. I didn't get it when I was very young either. Uh, we're all works in progress. Mm -hmm. But if someone is listening and they're thinking, oh, you know, I've been doing this for so long. <clears throat> There's just no way. This is just who I am. I'm never going to be able to shake this. It's got me in its grips. I just need to accept it and live whatever kind of life I can scrape by with. I'm just, I'm, I'm too old or I'm too set in my ways, or I'm, I'm just, there's just not a chance for me. Mm. What would you say to that person? Well, I could understand. Uh, I have felt that way a lot. Like either I, oh, well, I'm too old or I'm like, I'm set in my ways, but um, there's much more out. There's always a future. There's always a road ahead of us. You know, like they said, I, I don't know if it's project 90, but I've heard like you have a rear view mirror. It was, a small rear view mirror, so you only see part of the what's behind you, but you have a whole big window in front of you. So you, you know, uh, we're still important. We're still a person that can add to others, our own lives. And, and, you know, like having six grandchildren, they're, they're like the world to me. Mm -hmm. And it's so important to be able to, for them to see me, um, and for me to teach them, um, yeah. like, you don't need alcohol to have fun mm -hmm. and you don't need alcohol to be sociable. Mm -hmm. You don't need alcohol because it just creates so many other problems. So if they could see that with adults, um, you know, they know, okay, well, um, I could get to a level that, you know, I could decide to drink or not to drink. So in other words, what I'm saying is to be an example for your, your mm -hmm. family, your children, for others, um, there are people who start new, and I started a new career now uh, after my retirement. So it's never, ever too late. And people who tell you that, it's just a lie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God made you for a reason, and he's going to see that uh, if you feel like you haven't reached that. And we're all, we don't reach that destiny until we get there. Mm -hmm. You know, It's the journey that we were on, and it's, it could be very exciting. No right. matter what age. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, you and I were speaking one day and I said, you know, Michelle, you, you, you stopped uh, your alcohol habit at 66. And when you look at things, I mean, you know, you think about something that maybe you had dreamed of doing or starting at, let's say 50, my age. If you had started at 50, you'd be 16 years into that hobby. Mm -hmm. The life expectancy these days, is in the 80s and 90s. I know a lot of people, I, I see more and more people who are hitting 100. Yeah, yeah. It's perspective. You doing this at this age, you'll look back and say, whew, look at me. I was so young when I started that. And <laughs> 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 so kicking it when you're 85, 86. Yes. Mm -hmm. like, well, that was 20 years ago. So before we conclude, talk about, you know, how your vision and possibility for the future has expanded versus how you looked at your future when you were drinking. Uh, well, I see so many possibilities now. Mm -hmm. I, um, you know, even the fact of maybe relocating, uh, living in another um, state, um, also, uh, I always wanted to write a book. I haven't, I haven't done anything like that yet, but I always wanted to write a book or I would love to just be able to speak to women, younger women, mm -hmm. um, you know, and because age gives you wisdom because um, like I did not go to a college, but I told my granddaughter that I went to the University of Life and, you know, it just brings, you could learn something in a book but living life, experiencing it, learning from it, and being able to 
give the generations below you, you know, that are, are yet to come. I mean, that's just so much wisdom. And I would love, I don't know where that will fall in with, whether it be faith, whether it be uh, missionary work, um, mm-hmm. you know, it, 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 the possibilities are endless, no matter what age you are. And um, even if you have aches and pains, you still could go forward. Yep. Yep. <laughs> right. And so anyone who's listening, if you're on that merry-go-round, ask yourself, what are your future plans? What's open to you? Because if you're like Michelle, and you're like me, when you're on that merry-go-round, you know, what do you see on a merry-go-round? The same thing over and over and over again. And if you're mm-hmm. strapped onto that merry-go-round, you feel like you can't get off it. That ride gets tired really fast. Mm-hmm. But then you listen to Michelle and I'm looking at her because we're videoing this and the way her face lights up when she talks about the future is incredible. Mm. That's the gift of leaving the alcohol behind for a while, maybe forever. We do mm-hmm. nine days and seeing what happens because when you're on that merry-go-round, you know what it looks like. So if you're listening to Michelle's story, I hope that you will ask yourself that possibly difficult question. But realize that taking that one thing, that damn alcohol, (laughs) (laughs) away for even a little while, the way it can change your perspective. Mm -hmm. And another thing that I tell myself that really was a game changer for me and that I share with our members is that if you have consumed alcohol regularly for a long enough period of time, especially if you're drinking to numb those feelings that are uncomfortable, like Michelle shared, and like I did, it's not your fault if you develop a dependence or a really bad habit with this stuff, because that's the nature of it. It's a highly addictive substance. Mm -hmm. However, it is your responsibility to not give up and to do something. And if that's project 90, that's wonderful. If it's something else, that's also wonderful. But I hope Michelle's story will inspire you and help you understand that as long as we have breath in our lungs, we have hope. (sighs) Well, Michelle, you just are amazing. I tell you that regularly. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Victoria. So are you. You're amazing. And um, I love the interview. I love the way you... uh, posed the questions to me. So it made it easier for me to answer because I was a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Um, well, you are living out your heart of service by doing this. And I am grateful. Project 90 is grateful. James is grateful. And everyone listening is blessed by this. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, For anyone listening, come on over and check out Project 90. You can tell we're pretty fun. We're friendly. We don't bite. (laughs) (laughs) You'll make friends, make some connections. We deliver all the stuff that alcohol promises, but fails to do. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So, Michelle, thanks again for being here. It's been a pleasure. Thank you uh, so much, Victoria. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I want to load you up with some free stuff. If you look in the show description, there's a link there to get my guide, which is the Alcohol Freedom Formula Guide. And in that guide, I will walk you through the process and system for successfully reducing or quitting alcohol. It's the same system and process that I give to my clients inside of Project 90. And if you would like to get your hands on that guide, you can click the link in the description part of this episode, or you can go to alcoholfreelifestyle.com forward slash guide. Likewise, if you would like to be considered for Project 90 to join our community and get some accountability, some coaching and have fun, achieve some goals over at least 90 days with our help and support, then you're invited to schedule a complimentary coaching call with one of my coaches. You can do that by clicking the link in the show description or going to alcoholfreelifestyle.com forward slash schedule. Now, Project 90 is for over 30s only. 
And it's really for people who are ready to get long-term power over alcohol. You don't have to quit forever, but you will have to quit for at least 90 days with our support. Just a reminder, 95% of my content is free and plastered all over the internet. If you just Google James Swanick and the word alcohol, you'll find that. For those of you who want additional support, if you want coaching, fun, accountability, if you realize that you can't do this on your own or you just plain don't want to, then I invite you to schedule that call and we can talk about if Project 90 is for you. If you would like to take some of my supplements, swanvitality.com is the website. I'll put a link in the show notes as well. I have a liver support product called Loving Liver, which I designed and specially formulated to help remove toxins from your liver after years of alcohol consumption. Again, there's a link in the show description. We've also got a green powder there, which turns into a green juice filled with uh, amazing ingredients to support you and give you energy throughout the day. And there's also a magnesium product, which I take every night to help me prepare for sleep and to sleep through the night. So there's a few options there. Lastly, if this episode or the show in general has helped you or supported you in any way, I would so appreciate it if you would write a review. It really does help the show climb the rankings and expose the show to people who don't yet know about us. So if this show has benefited you in any way and you feel compelled to pay it forward, just writing a short little review, hopefully a nice one, will be so appreciated and I will thank you immensely. Lastly, if you'd like to talk to me about anything at all, feel free to send me an email at james at alcoholfreelifestyle.com. I do read and respond to every email. And you can also follow me on Instagram at, at James Swanick. Send me a message there. And I look forward to connecting with you soon. Catch you on the next one.